Hey everyone, Tickle G here, representing those who are 40 and up who love their tech. And I first want to say that I've been enjoying my summer break so far. I've just been relaxing, playing a couple of games, um, just chilling, just chilling, enjoying my tech, enjoying the weather. So that's one of the reasons why I haven't made or posted a video in a minute. But I do want to thank those of you who have been on my channel and still um, looking at the videos that I've already made and still making comments and uh, things like that. I appreciate that. And I appreciate the new subscribers as well. Um, even though I haven't, like I said, uploaded a video in a while, I still got new subscribers. So I'm thankful that people are watching my videos and are liking what I'm saying. So without further ado, let me put this video out and say, um, you know, just from observing, you know, during my break, that the handheld PC market, just like any market that is popular, it's starting to get a little inundated with new devices. And like I said, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with competition, but there's so many that's gonna be out, it's just gonna get too, too inundated where you're not gonna find, find a lot of um, quality handheld PCs, just like you won't find sometimes a lot of quality PCs. Sometimes you can get a lot of bad budget PCs. It's kinda of hard, like I said, to really find that right PC or even handheld PC for that matter. I'm gonna excuse my voice and when I'm on break, sometimes my voice gets like this. So excuse the voice, as long as you understand me, it's all good. So as, as I was saying about the handheld PC market, GPD, like I said, that company basically jump-started this with the uh, GPD Win line, the GPD Win and the GPD Win 2. And I still have the GPD Win 2, still thinks that, that that particular model is the best particular form factor for a handheld PC, even in today's standards. But... After that, other companies came in. One netbook came in with some handheld PCs. Um, this company called uh, Aya with the Aya Neo. Where is that at? Oh, there it is right there. Looks like that right there. Oh, there it is right there too, the Aya Neo. Like I said, GPD also made some newer ones. Here's the GPD Win 3. Um, here's the Steam Deck that a lot of people talked about. Now, this one is interesting because it's so cheap. It's a lot cheaper than uh, a lot of the handheld PCs in, uh, that come from China, such as from GPD or One, uh, One Netbook. So the basic starting price for this one is, what is it, $400? And that's not bad. And I do have one on reserve. Don't know if I'm going to keep it, but got it on reserve. Should be expecting it in October. But like I said, it's starting to blow up a little bit. Oh, look at the Smog Z. Remember that? That has never came about. And I feel bad for all the people that put money into that. Let's see. Here's another mock-up of the Smog Z. Here's another um, I and Neo. Like I said, it's starting to blow up. And there's some other handheld PCs that are coming into play. Let's see if I can find one. All right. Here's an Ion Loki that's going to be coming out. Uh, the Ann Burnick. Uh, a lot of people are talking about this one. So that one is coming. I don't know if you remember Lenovo tried to make one, but never launched it. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of them. A whole bunch of them coming out. Look at this one with detachable uh, controllers, which never is going to come about. But still. Starting to get a little inundated, and like I said, nothing wrong with competition. But again, trying to find the right one for you is now going to take some time because a lot more are coming into play. So you really got to look at the specs, you got to look at the functionality, got to look at um, how it's going to play the games that you own, that you have, um, how it's going to play on that device. So it doesn't necessarily mean a lot for the handheld PC to have the best processor. Now, it all depends, like I said, on the games that you're playing. If you're playing older PC games, games that are like two, three, four years old, 
does not matter about the newest processor. You can get um, 11th Gen um, 1135 and it will play fine. But if you want to play Elden Ring with the highest uh, FPS or frames per second, then yeah, you want to get the best processor. So this video, I just wanted to say that I am still a fan of handheld PCs. Like I said, I still have my Win 2. Love that, but that's not powerful enough. Um, when it comes for me in looking for a handheld PC, I wanted to try to find one that encompasses everything that I do, not just gameplay, but I'm using it as my full-fledged everyday PC. So, for example, I have and have had for a while my one netbook, one mix four. Love this laptop. Tennis screen, it's fantastic. Small, it works, and it's Thunder 4. Thunderbolt 4 compliant, so I have a graphics card it's connected to. It works fantastic, so I use it here in my office. Now, like I said, as far as my everyday PC, I want a handheld PC. The Win 2 can't cut it, not powerful enough. And so this video, I just want to talk about, in my opinion, out of all these handheld PCs, the GOAT, the one that I believe that's a GOAT. And when I say GOAT, I'm talking... Uh, full functionality uh, for work and for play. And the handheld PC that I believe is to go is <laughs> the One X Player. The big one. Not the mini, but the big one. I believe this is to go. And let me tell you why. First off, let me tell you just about the specs. I mean, the specs really haven't changed um, since it's been out. Um, but today, um, if you do decide to get a 1X player, you can get an Intel processor or an AMD processor. So both processors are available. The one that I have in this one is the 1165G7. So it's an i7, 1165G7, and it has Iris graphics. Um, so it, it does what I needed to do. Um, it does not have and will not have dedicated graphics, so you're not going to find NVIDIA or anything like that in here. But, again, because it has Thunderbolt 4 uh, capability, you can connect a graphics card or a graphics um, box to this to enhance your um, graphics. But, I digress back to the specs. So, 1165 G7 processor, 8.4 inch screen. Weighs 1.8 pounds, so it's less than 2 pounds, but pretty much close to it. So you can't just say 2 pounds. Um, Bluetooth 5, Wi-Fi 6, inbound. Has a fingerprint reader on the power button, which is kind of awesome. Um, it has the turbo button right here to increase the TDP so that you can get um, some uh, higher frame rates when you're playing games. But it's going to put uh, some stress on the processor which will uh, make this run hot, which will, of course, decrease the um, operating time. So it'll decrease the battery. And it has a 2.5K in screen, or 2560 times 1600 pixel density. So the screen, beautiful. Um, like I said, great device. Love this device. And let me tell you a couple of other things that I like about this that makes this a GOAT, for, definitely for me. So it has stereo speakers right here. It has a keyboard button. So if you didn't have this on um, the optional uh, at a keyboard, you can press this button, little keyboard pop up, which is kind of cool. Has some cool shortcuts as well. So if you press the home and the keyboard, so this is the home button right here, the orange button. If you press this and the keyboard button, brings you up to the task manager. So that's a small shortcut. It's just in case, like I said, you don't have a keyboard to go control or delete, which is kind of cool. Um, let's see. It has two USB point four uh, USB Type C ports on the top, and again, both of these ports um, have, are Thunderbolt four compliant. So you can plug in, like I said, a graphics dock in one of these. Also has one USB Type A port, and that's three point one or three point two. I can't remember which one. Has dual exhaust, and it has two fans with copper piping like i said the optional keyboard um it has all your bells and whistles as far as your buttons so you got your two analog sticks your d-pad 
Not really a fan of the D-pad yet. I mean, I gotta work into it. I'll tell you about that a little bit later. Your zappy buttons, your shoulder buttons, so you have your regular click shoulder buttons, and true analog triggers for your racing games, which is kind of cool as well. Um, what else do I like about this? Oh yeah, headphone jack right here, so you can plug in the speaker, something like that. Kind of cool. Also has a kickstand, and I'll explain this setup in a in a minute. But the kickstand allows you to set up like this to use it like a laptop. And because I love my Velcro so much, put the Velcro like this. Boom, closes out like that. Puts it in. Actually, I gotta set the hibernate. Oh man, I gotta set it back over. <laughs> So it does turn off the screen. I didn't put it in the sleep mode. I put it in the hibernate because sometimes it stays on and it will run in your bag. So I have a minor hibernate. I gotta turn it back on like this with the power button. Another thing that I like about this, oh, there we go, is it's a touch screen. And not only touch screen, it is full pen support. Now with the One X Player Mini, I had one of those. I actually bought one of those because I did. I was very interested in the size, but no one told me. And I, I, I kind of always figured with one uh, netbook devices that they're all pen supportive. Every one that I bought so far, except for the one X Player Mini, every one pen support. So this pen support, the one Mix Four pen support, the one Mix Three, the one Mix Two, all of those pen support even the gx1 and the gx1 pro all of those one netbook devices are pen supportive not just touchscreen but again full pen support as you can see gotta love it i love pen support like i said as a teacher pen support for me is awesome so that when i want to draw on the screen draw a Quarter notes, because again, you know I'm a music teacher. Eighth notes, blah, blah, blah. So I draw some ties. Half notes, data half notes. When I want to draw my stuff, draw right on the screen. Kids can see it as I draw because I got this connected um, via uh, micro, uh, Microsoft wireless display adapter. So, so again, pen support for me, absolutely needed. But with the one X Player Mini, no pen support. And... I did not know. Um, it was not mentioned in any videos on YouTube. Not a lot of people really use this for, you know, drawing on the screen. But for me, like I said, I need to have that. So with, since a One X Player Mini did not have pen support, I sent that back and got myself one that is pen supportive. Now, yes, I did want the 1195 G7, but I um, found this one really good price on eBay. So that's why I'm rocking this one right here. So why is this a GOAT for me? I've already mentioned that pen support definitely is the number one thing that I need on any laptop that I buy. So this having pen support is awesome. Another thing that makes this a GOAT for me, the size. Even though it's an 8.4 inch screen and it's 1.8 pounds, it's not that heavy at all. So to hold it and to play my games and to use this in laptop mode, quote unquote, with the keyboard, full function keyboard, with a trackpad, people. With a trackpad. There's the mouse cursor. You see it moving. Awesome stuff. So I use this as my laptop. Close it up. Shut off the screen. Like I said, I got mine in Hibernate, so it works very, very well. It turns off. Keeps the battery power. Um, just a fantastic device. To have my controls on my um, PC is a big plus. So I don't have to necessarily carry a separate um, game controller. I just do my work, and after I'm doing my work and want to play a quick game, boom, play my quick game, and then still have my stuff in the background. To, and So, for example, if I'm at work and I'm playing the game and the kids are coming in, I can take the game off, have that running in the background, or um, condense it, get to work, and then when the kids leave, back to my game. It is pretty awesome stuff. So, love that about this now with the turbo button like i said this is not a necessity so because uh, um there are programs that you can install on your pc to control the tdp and set it at um 
uh, TDP that you would like rather than just the two that are embedded on the system. So by default, it's at 20 watts. But if you press the turbo button, it kicks it up to 28 watts. But like I said, with the um, certain uh, programs, you can set your TDP to however high or low you want it to. You can't set it too high, of course, because you don't want to fry the processor. So I'm probably going to, my highest will be 30. Lowest will be 5. Definitely lowest will be 5. So the lower your TDP, the longer this would run or last. But that's, like I said, those particular things that I've mentioned are the reasons why this is a go. Another couple of reasons why, micro SD card support. Now the One X Player Mini does not have the micro SD card slot. With this one, you do have it so that you can expand your storage. And not only that, because of the ports that you have, you can also expand your storage that way. So with me, I have, and have had for a while, um, external storage. So this one right here, my Samsung, my trusty Samsung two terabyte um, external SSD. Had this one for a while, still use it. So I didn't want to necessarily take this apart and put in a new SSD. I wanted to use what I already have. So this is two terabytes. Inside of here is a two terabyte and about two 2242 SSD that I originally had for my um, GPD-1.2. But since I'm not using that, decided to buy this um, enclosure to use it as external storage as well. And again, it's in SSD. So by having this and this gives me four terabytes of external SSD storage, as well as the one terabyte internal SSD. And with the card slot, I have a one terabyte card in the micro SD card slot, which gives me a total of six terabytes. And it's still not heavy at all. So with Velcro, I got the two terabyte, the Samsung, right on the kickstand. So you just kick it right up. It's not, it, it's not cumbersome. It's out of sight, so it's not ugly in your face. Of course, if you turn around, yeah, it looks a little busy on the back, but still. This route is cheaper than getting an eight terabyte internal SSD on the M.2. And the SSD on the inside is a M.2 2280. So it's a long one, about this long. Um, if you want to get an eight terabyte one, you're looking at a thousand dollars minimum. Go on Amazon, see if I'm, I'm, I'm definitely telling you the truth. Thousand dollars on Amazon. Um, you gotta try, try to find some on eBay at a good deal, but they're kind of hard to find because a lot of people are getting them for the PS5s and things like that. So that's why I'm just using the external SSDs that I already have. And they work pretty well on here. You would think that they would need a lot of power because this particular hub that I have connected is powered by the One X player itself. And so both of these are powered through here, powered through the um, One X player. So you would think it would need a lot of power, but believe it or not, both of them show up on here without the addition of me plugging in additional power to have both of these running on the One X player. The One X player by itself is applying enough power to the hub to power both of these SSDs. And I think that's pretty impressive. So again, this is my go. This is my go-to. I'm very, very happy that I got this. And this is the second time that I've gotten this. The first time that I got it, I was a little disappointed that the screen was big. Well, it was just getting to me that the screen was too big. I really missed the size of the Win 2. And so I tried that one and I tried a couple of other handheld PCs, but Again, when it comes to having this doing everything that I wanted to do, the only one that made sense that can, like I said, do everything that I wanted to do is the One X player, the big one, not the mini. So, like I said, GPD-1.3, cool, but no pin support. Um, Ioneo, no pin support. Uh, any of the new ones, no pin support. Only one, the one made by one netbook. So... This, again, is my go. I was using that, the one mix four, but 
I didn't want to have the extra controller or the extra stuff that I had on it to try to make it port a portable game system. This just works because again, you have embedded controls on the PC. You have a nice array of ports. You have dual exhaust, dual fans. You have the option to put on external uh, storage. You got the optional keyboard to make it like a PC. You got the stereo speakers. You got the turbo button. You got clickable analog sticks. You got you got it all on one device. And the more par uh, powerful the processor, the more uh, frames per second you can get on the newest modern games. So, for example, God of War or um, Elden Ring. But again. If you just want to play some older games, especially if you want to play some emulator games, this is going to work wonders for you. It doesn't matter if you get the 1135 or the 1165 that I have, or even the 1195, or if you have the 1185, if you're lucky to find that one in the market, that one's going to work great for you too. Even the AMD's processor, um, one that X players, those work wonders too. Because I did have the 5700 Mini. Again, because it didn't have pen support, had to send that back and get this one. So that's it, people. This is my GOAT as far as uh, handheld PCs. And like I said, I know some other ones are going to be made, but it's not being made for you know the well-rounded person that wants to use this as their main PC. This is it right here. So take my advice. Get this one out of any of the other ones if you want to use this as a full-fledged PC for work and for play. So that's the end of my video, people. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the information. And like I said, I'm not knocking any of the other handheld PCs because I like that. I like competition. But I would have competition for, you know, an, a handheld player that can do it all rather than just play games or just focus on games. Like I said, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, definitely leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Tell your friends about my channel. And I hope to see you in my next video.